All right, I'm gonna make this really quick because uh, we've gotta to go to get to the hospital because today is uh, surgery day, spinal fusion day. Apparently it's gonna be about a four hour procedure. They're gonna be um, fusing together L5S1, uh, doing a cage in there, then a plate and then four screws. And then they're also doing some uh, nerve repair because my nerves down my legs have been pretty much fried for quite a while now. So. Um, Prayers and good energy, and uh, I'm sure everything will be fine, and see you guys when I get out. Hey everyone, um, if you're new to the channel, my name is Adam and this is The New Woodworker. If you're just coming here for the title, uh, for the information about the Spinal Fusion, welcome to my regulars. Uh, good to see you all again. I appreciate you stopping by. So, as the title suggests, I have now had my L5S1 P lifts uh, Spinal Fusion. Um, apparently my scar is quite long because of the nerve damage that I have had. I've been putting this surgery off since 2003 and it's currently 2021, so what, 18 years? And uh, I've been putting it off for a few reasons. I've been putting it off mostly because everyone I've spoken with says that, you know, once you get cut open, you can't go back. And uh, I mean, how true is that? Once they cut open your spine, you're 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 done. You know, you can't go backwards. You can't reverse that surgery. So I continued to live my life in 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 ways of just constant adjustment. I mean, I stretch every morning. I do basically a PT routine, a personal therapy, a physical therapy routine every morning just to get out of bed. And it's been that way for years. And um, I've been living in, an, in agonizing and excruciating pain for at least 10 years, and it's been pretty bad. But I've managed it through um, cycling through pharmaceutical pain medications as well as natural pain medications like Kratom. Uh, Kratom has been a lifesaver. Uh, Kratom, K-R-A-T-O-M, has gotten me through the past six years. But be careful with it because it is addictive. It is psychoactive. And if you use it respectfully, just like anything else, it can be such a blessing. But I found ways to manage my pain on a daily basis, to work in construction, to remodel my homes, to flip houses, uh, to climb trees, to do landscaping. So for those of you who don't know, I own and operate a construction company, a tree and landscape service, a handmade furniture company, as well as a production company where we do photography and videography. And I have six kids. And we have been renovating our 1880s Victorian uh, manor, 6,000 square feet of, uh, of, <laughs> of renovation needed. And so it's been, um, it's been, a, it's been a long and painful uh, five, six years, I'll tell you that much. And so this surgery was, was sorry, uh, so like today, so I'm home today. And um, I was in the hospital basically for seven days, but there's a lot to say about that because my experience was, was abnormal in the hospital and, and um, not normal, I should say, I don't know. Um, but I'm home, today is my first full day being home and um, I, don't, I don't even know how much of this is gonna come out coherently, but um, my mind is all over the place. I also have a brain injury. From five years ago, I got smashed by one of my dump trucks. Uh, frontal lobe here, cracked my skull, bruised my brain. So that affects me as well. But um, I've got a great Tempur-Pedic bed right there in our master suite. And um, 
I thought that would be phenomenal, you know, coming home from the back surgery, going into that bed. But I can't get comfortable in that bed at all. And hold on a second. Actually, I'm having a lot of trouble with my staples today. Uh, so I'm going to kind of end up having to record this like this. I hope you don't mind. Actually, I don't care if you mind at all. So, um, so I thought that having a Tempur-Pedic bed at home would, would serve justice for this, this back uh, surgery, but I can't get comfortable during the day. At night is fine because I can lay on my side and it's very comfortable that way. But during the day, a friend of mine brought over a zero gravity chair. And this thing has been just such a blessing because this way I can keep the pressure off of my, my incision, my staples, and my plate. So I put this surgery off for a long time because I never felt comfortable with the surgeons that I had met with. And for the most part, I continued to meet with uh, orthopedic surgeons. Actually, all of them were orthopedic surgeons until the last one. And he's, the last guy is the guy who did the surgery. And I can't tell you how grateful I am that this is the guy who did it. So going back, um, I had an injury in 2003. That injury actually blew out one disc completely, L5-S1. Cracked my uh, SI joint and herniated L4-L5. This surgeon did a lot of work on my back because I have had a lot of nerve damage to my legs and my legs have been numb and tingly and painful for years. And so he had a lot of nerve damage to repair. So I continued to put it off and live my life and beat up my body and use it in many ways I shouldn't be. Climbing trees as an arborist and lifting logs and just smashing my discs and doing construction and yeah, so... Um... So I met with so many surgeons that I didn't like and didn't feel comfortable with that I, I started to give up and I really started to feel like I, I'd never be able to find relief or find the right surgeon until a friend of mine, actually the same friend who brought me this zero gravity chair, said that her spinal fusion was done by a neurosurgeon and that's who I should be seeking out and that changed everything. Um, I also found out from another friend who had a, a, a quite a few um, surgeries. This doctor was the one who performed his surgeries and he came highly referred at the University of Penn in Philadelphia. And he is a top-notch neurosurgeon by the name of Paul Marcotte, M-A-R-C-O-T-T-E. So when my friend gave me the name of this surgeon, I pursued him and I didn't have the right insurances. My insurances wouldn't cover this surgeon. So God bless my wife. She, she went and took the reins on it and got me the right insurances so that I could see this specific surgeon. We met with him and, and right away we knew he was the right one. Uh, because of the COVID restrictions, we could only meet with him virtually. But he and his team were, were just the 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 I felt the most comfortable meeting with he and with him and his team and I'll tell you this he was the first surgeon to sit there and listen to me talk instead of trying to tell me how I should feel or why I should feel what I feel based on my scans this was the first surgeon who sat there and listened to me tell him what I've been through how I have felt and why I have felt this way and that's what you need to be looking for and if your surgeon doesn't do that, then that's not the right surgeon. Never get cut open by someone you don't feel comfortable with. Never get cut open by someone who you feel doesn't have your best interest in mind. Well, long story short for this video, I ended up going with Dr. Marcotte, this neurosurgeon at UPenn. And we scheduled surgery for a very specific day so that we could finish renovating this house here, our Victorian that we are putting on the market, so that I could have all my work done, all my renovations done, and that my wife would just come in and do some cleaning and staging and decorating, and the house would be ready to be sold. Now, what happens after that is a gamble, because I'm, you know, at this point, fairly immobile, and, uh, um, you know, we could be selling our house pretty quickly, 
but that depends obviously on the stipulations of closing time, right? So my surgery is done, and one of the reasons my recovery is a bit different than everybody else's that you may speak with is because I was negligently discharged from the hospital just two days after my surgery, and I was in excruciating pain, and we live an hour plus away from the hospital depending on traffic. And the day that I was discharged wrongfully, um, it was pouring rain and there was a ton of traffic and it was the middle of the day. So there was rush hour and it was an hour and a half drive going home. And I wanted to die by the time I got home. I literally wanted to die. My back hurt so much. Everything hurt so much. Uh, I just wanted to collapse. I, I felt like I was going to break in half at my back, at my, um, at my surgery site. So I'll get more into that part of the experience uh, in, an, in another video. But in this video, I just wanted to, to let you all know that I've had this surgery, that the surgery itself has gone well, I believe. And at this point right now, um, seven days later, a week, exactly one week later, um, I, I am in a lot of pain at my surgery site. My staples hurt a lot, and I can feel my plate internally, of course, because you're going to uh, in the beginning. And, and my site, my uh, surgery sites definitely hurt a lot. And uh, I'm not, you know, I'm taking my pain meds as, as directed, but um, because I've lived with this pain for so long, because I've been using medications for so long, and my opioid receptors from Kratom have been pretty much numbed from, from daily use of Kratom from so long, because remember, even though Kratom's natural, it hits at the opioid receptors. And the more you use it uh, regularly and in higher doses, the more you're going to dull and numb and, and really beat up your opioid receptors. So I did what I could to stop use of everything within a week before the surgery. But again, I've been doing this for so long, dealing with this for so long, excuse me, that there's only so much you can do. So the amount of pain medication they can give me, you know, without, you know, without uh, caution is, is just not really doing a whole lot for me. And I'm off Kratom. I've been off Kratom since my surgery day. So it's been seven days completely off Kratom, uh, which, is, which is tough because Kratom has withdrawal effects, uh, just like any, any narcotics or opioids. And um, I guess it'll be a long road ahead. But, you know, you've got to stay mentally ahead of yourself. You've got to know that, what to expect. You've got to know that it's going to be tough. So you, you've got to mentally be ready for it and... Um, just be ready for the pain, be ready for the change, be ready for the, the, different, the different aspects of life that you're going to have to experience, I guess. So I think, I think I'll probably give you guys more information about this surgery with more, with more videos, but I'm going to try to keep them short for our viewers here. But guys and gals, thanks for watching. This is Adam, and this will be, uh, I guess, I don't know, episode one or two of my... Uh, spinal fusion, yay! Well, I guess I'm really grateful I've had it done now, so it's about time. Alright guys, over and out. Talk to you soon.